own God. Dead idols are impotent. Dead idols are powerless. Dead idols are worthless. But the living God is all powerful, almighty, omnipotent. Truly, there is no other God that can deliver after they sought. So he blessed God for his goodness and his power. But let's notice something about Nebuchadnezzar. See this kind of testimony he gave. And that's sound doctrine. Nebuchadnezzar's praise, Nebuchadnezzar's confession concerning God was doctrinally sound. Not only that, it was widely publicized. He announced everywhere. He said, there is no other God like this. Nebuchadnezzar, that's true. But Nebuchadnezzar, I have a question for you. If you make that public confession, that public declaration, there's no other God like this, what are you doing to your image? You know, you must carry everything to the practical, logical conclusion. When you say something, you follow it through. If you say there's no other God that can deliver, like this God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I want to see the logical conclusion and the practical conclusion. Bring that image down, smash it, crush it, and throw it away. Then I will know that your testimony is for real. That's telling us something. There are some people like Nebuchadnezzar. They can say the right thing. They can quote the right word. And they can talk doctrinally sound. And they can even publicize it. They can stand up in, in the assembly of the people of God and say, There is no God that can deliver after they sought. And yet, they will not follow it through and repent of their sin. And yet, they will not follow it through and abandon their idol. And yet, they will not follow it through and destroy all those evil things they raised up. And that's why the Lord said, look at Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. And we're looking at verse 31. Ezekiel 33 verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people come in. And they see it before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouths they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. See that? That's Nebuchadnezzar. And many people are like, not like Nebuchadnezzar today. They go to assemblies, they go to conventions, they go to convocations, they go to retreats, they go to whatever it is, and then over there they, they raise up their hands and they say, this God is great, and this God is wonderful. I'm going to tell it everywhere. And they publicize it everywhere. Sometimes they say it on television, sometimes on radio, and they say it everywhere for everybody to hear. I about the idol at home. I about the idol in the heart. I about the sin. I about the polygamy. How about the many women? How about the stealing? How about all the things they're hiding? Carry the confession to a logical conclusion. Don't just say it with the word of mouth. That was the problem of Nebuchadnezzar. He said it with the word of mouth. He did not follow it through with his life. In Isaiah chapter 29, I'm reading verse 13. Isaiah chapter 29. I was looking at verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said... For as much as these people draw near with their mouth and with their leaves, do honor me, but remove their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people, even a marvelous work, and a wonder, for the, work, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. You see that there are some people that go to some meetings today. Sometimes I think it's for political reason. When you have, you know, thousands and thousands of, you know, children of God gathering somewhere, and then you feel that, oh, these people are very many. If I can just go there and identify with them, I think if I need to be voted for, I'll be voted into office again. I think that's why some of these people go there. 
and then they might make a public declaration this god is wonderful and this god is mighty there's no god like this hey i had that before from nebuchadnezzar his heart did not change his mind did not change his idol worship did not change show that you are greater than nebuchadnezzar and abandon the idol that's what god is looking for it's not looking for people that are just saved by the word of mouth he's looking for the people that will have a change of life and except you be converted, except you be born again, and your life is turned around, you'll not be able to get to the kingdom of God. I will not be like Nebuchadnezzar. You carry your confession, you carry your declaration to the logical conclusion. You say, since there is no God apart from this God, the image I set up, I smash it, I destroy it, I get it out of the way. I'm going to serve the Lord. Then we know that your testimony, your proclamation, your declaration, your confession is for real. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. In Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at verse 21. It says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that... What? Do it. It's not just to say it. If Kanesa could say it, who cannot say it? Anybody can talk. Anybody can publicize. Anybody can proclaim. Anybody can make any confession. But to do it, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. I pray will be doers in Jesus' name. I come back to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and I'm reading the last verse there, verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. The time of your promotion is coming. You see, after you take your stand, after you say, no, I'm not going to worship their idol. I'm not going to yield. To, I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to be a new creature, a noble conqueror, a non-conformist. And then you take that stand and you say, I will not compromise with the world. Whatever they say, whatever they do, and however they're going to act, here is where I stand. After that kind of stand, after that kind of rigid, rigorous, righteous living, the Lord will promote you. Because you see, promotion does not come from the east or from the west. Promotion is from the Almighty God Himself. We're looking at Psalm 75, and I'm reading verse 6 and verse 7. Psalm 75, we're looking at verse 6, Psalm 75. And we're reading from verse 6, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. I pray God will set you up. When you oppose the world, you oppose the corruption in the world, you oppose all the compromise, compromise the spirit in the world, and you have the spirit of a conqueror and the spirit of a non-conformist, a new creature, a noble conqueror. And say, so I'm going to stand for righteousness, and you keep on standing. At the end of it, all promotion will come. In Psalm 91, I'm reading from verse 14. Psalm 91, verse 14. Because... He has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. God will answer your prayer. I will be with him in trouble. He will be with him in that trial. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Premature death? I said premature death? No. That's what Nebuchadnezzar wanted for. He said, you'll die before your time. I told you to bow down to the idol. And you're not bound. I will so torment you. I'll throw you into that very furnace. And you will die before your time. And the people who see you die before your time, they'll never dare me anymore. But do you see that they didn't die? You will not die. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is not mighty, not powerful enough to kill you. You will live your full days. Because it's for the people that are faithful. It's for the people that dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And they say, I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to go back to the world. I'm going to take my stand for the Lord. Those are the people. And the Lord will see that you have that long life in Jesus' name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. He will show it to you. In Genesis chapter 41. Genesis I'm reading chapter 41, verse 39. Genesis chapter 41, 
verse 39. It says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, and there is, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art, thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. You know the persecutors, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. They wanted to kill him, but God said no. If God says no to your enemy, there's nothing they can do. If he says no to Satan, there's nothing he can do. And if he says no to those people having the power of darkness over anybody, but not over you, it, it will not hold. God said no to the persecutors of Joseph, and now God promoted him, God will promote you. All the Lord is waiting for is that you'll take your stand. You will not compromise with the people of the world. You'll say, here I stand. I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to yield to the will of Nebuchadnezzar or an idol worshiper or to the will of society. I'm going to do the will of God all my life and the Lord will be by your side. Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm going to take my stand and I'm going to keep on standing for righteousness. Honestly, continue for the faith was delivered unto the saints. I'm not going to allow the threats of Nebuchadnezzar. In your life, stand up and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I thank you for what I've learned today. I thank you for what I've learned. I'm going to take my stand. I'm going to stand for righteousness. I'm going to hold on to the truth. I'm not going to allow anything to sway me, anything to discourage me, anything to destroy my stand. I'm going to stand. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will abide with you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, thank you for my salvation. Thank you for bringing me to the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you have done, what you have done in my heart, in my life. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the transformation. Thank you for making me a new creature in Christ. A new creature, a non-conformist. You tell the Lord, the world is trying to bend you, bend your will. The Lord is, the world is trying to make you bow. And the Lord is trying to, the, the world is trying to make you bend. And you're saying, oh no, I'm not going to bend to them. I'm not going to bow to them. I'm going to stand for my Lord. Keep on standing and the Lord will help you. Keep on standing, standing for righteousness, standing for the truth, standing for the faith once delivered unto the state. Don't just stand with proclamation, with confession. Don't just stand with uh, promoting and, uh, and publicizing. With your very life, your very life, saying, I'm going to the righteous. When they're doing what they're doing, and when they're going the way they're going, and when they're going after the world, I'm not going to go after the world. I'm not going to go after the world. I'm going to stand for righteousness. And then the Lord will uphold you, and the Lord will preserve your life. Tell the Lord, the challenges are there in your office. The challenges are there in your community. The challenges are there in your home. The challenges are there in your family. The challenges are there among the men and the women around you. And they want to bend you, they want to crush you. They want to make you compromise. They want to make you faithful, disloyal to the teaching of the Word of God. They want to make you a wishy-washy church girl, a compromising Bible carrier, a bench woman in the church. And they want to make you as, as defiled, as sinful, as backsliding as they. But no, you are going to take your stand. You wake up today, you wake up today and say, Lord, now I know, now I know, now I know. Where the promotion lies, where the preservation lies, where the, where the preservation, the provision of the Lord white lies, is on the side of the people that will not compromise. Take your stand, take your stand. Don't allow any intimidation, don't allow any kind of frightening, don't allow any kind of threatening. Take your stand and say, here I stand. I will not do otherwise. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. It's on the side of those who refuse to bow to the enemy. 
Dios lo que hizo va a otro de nuevo Dios lo que hizo va a otro de aire o así tell the Lord in the hour of trial help me and make me strong in the hour of temptation help me and make me strong in the hour of the threatness of the people of the world help me and make me live an uncompromising life They cannot hurt you, they cannot hurt you. What can they do? The very ears of your head are on the verge. Don't hear what they say. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Don't listen to their threatenings. Listen to the promise of the Almighty God. I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When you walk through the fire, I will be with you. And the flame shall not kindle upon you. Listen to what the Almighty God is saying. He was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, I will be with you. He was with Daniel in the lion's den, and he said, I will be with you. Live for righteousness. Live for purity. Yes, the people are there, the people of the world, those who are born after the flesh, those who are fleshly, those who are worldly, those who are carnal, they are trying to persecute those who are born after the spirit. But the persecution means nothing. Go ahead and live for God, and live for Jesus, and live for His glory. And exalt him and honor him and let your light so shine before me that they will see your good works and glorify your fathers in heaven. Can I ask a big question, a great question? And so is that God? Leave them alone with God. And just say, I'm not going to answer the question. Whatever it be. I'm taking a stand for righteousness. Whatever it be, here I stand. I'm not going to compromise. You tell the Lord, you're not going to go back to the world. You're not going to compromise your stand. You're not going to yield to the enemy. You're not going to surrender your heart, your life, your will, your faith, your, your consecration, your commitment. You're not going to surrender that to Nebuchadnezzar. His fire means nothing. His threatness means nothing. Stand for the truth. Let's know where you stand. Let's know where you stand. Get the one leg out there, one leg in here. Let's know where you stand. In the day, in the night, when you smile, when you frown. When they threaten, when they promise, whatever they say, whatever they do, let's know where you stand. That you're on the Lord's side. That you're on the side of righteousness. You're on the side of purity. You're on the side of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Give your life to the Lord and let that life stay, remain, abide with the Lord. Now you know they cannot hurt you. Now you know there's nothing to fear. Now you know the Lord is on the side of the people that stand for truth and righteousness. What are you waiting for then? You bench the rule a little before, you bow down a little to them before, go back and reverse that compromising situation. Go back and now take your stand that the people will know where to find you. When you're looking for people who are faithful, who are righteous, who are pure, who are non conformist then they will know you are the man, you are the woman, you are the boy, you are the girl. No fear in your heart. 
no intimidation making to tremble making a beat to knock together what can the Panizer do beyond what he has done and failed and they always fail tell the Lord these are return to have strength this is a time for the Lord to give you courage, commitment, conviction so that as you go back home, whatever they say you are standing erect and standing firm for righteousness when you go back to the place of work this week you are taking your stand and those who see that they lose their hope of gain, unlawful gain because now you have exposed their fault, their search. You have exposed the making a lot of gain in that company. They might persecute you, say some things against you. It does nothing. Be righteous and let the people know. You are going to sell your salvation, your birthright, because of money. I remember this were on errands from Nebuchadnezzar. They are the people that were born in fire. And if any sinner sends you to run errands for them, to bind up shit that we shack on a bed nigga, don't you do it. If you want to do it, let them do it themselves. And face the fury, the indignation of God, the wrath of God, the judgment of God. This one ends for the cadmissa. Those are the people that go to hell first. Hell fire first. They are the people that die prematurely. But the men of God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will abide, will remain strong, healthy, sound, nothing evil happening to them. Only those who are on errands for Nebuchadnezzar, those are the people that will face the judgment of God. Come out from among them and now take your stand on the side. Of the people who love God, of the people who love righteousness, of the people who are holy and righteous and pure. To say, Lord, I'm sorry for the past. Now, in this present day, now in this present time, now in this present hour, I'll be standing for the truth. No more compromise, no more trembling, no more shaking.